start. This is the Koha US circulation uh, SIG meeting for August 2nd, 2022. And we are just discussing a usage report, trying to, to figure out if anybody had a report that would show what items are checked out monthly. Is that correct? Uh, essentially, yeah, just a, yeah, a report of what was checked out over the previous month or usage statistics. <laughs> That's the key word, you know, um, to track usage. I'm, I'm looking through my collection of reports. I've also shared the, the agenda with in the chat. I forgot to send it out early this month or early last or late last month, which I usually do, but I wrote myself a reminder and I'm gonna do it this next month, I swear. So but okay, back to so I'm working on two computers, so that's why it might be a little weird. It's fine, Daniel. I, I found uh, two other universities I, was, I just am going to reach out to this week too to try to coordinate a little more. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. That's cool. One's in Pennsylvania too, so that's really neat. And the other one seemed to know the person that was in my posi a similar position before I got here. So that's even better. Nice. Just working on running one of my reports to make sure that I've got what you need. So you need item type, check out. We use like um, mark item used and then returns and renewals. Would that be something that you need? Sounds right, but it, it's just so odd how everything's organized by this item type. And uh, just, just it seems like it's overcomplicated. And all, most of the reports seem to build like a total count. I mean, I know I can make one, to do this, but like I said, I was just open to, to uh, you know, save the headache going back and forth. Yeah, you've seen and you've taken a look at the 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 report catalog that's linked in the in the report module of Koha, right? Uh, report module, yeah, the guided, the saved, like to go to the library of report like the Koha wiki. Like I've yeah. gone through there, like just trying to find a simple report that would just say, that would just show item, like the items, <laughs> line items, like mm -hmm. the title of every book. Okay. When it was checked out on, essentially, that's all I was going to make, but just to track the usage of it and when it was checked out. Okay. Probably the call number two. It seems to be the popular way, the best way to actually uh, classify these. Where did it go? Jason, share here. I put a link in the chat to one that's in the wiki. It's It's got some outdated conventions, but um, it may still work. List of items checked out in a date range. That sounds good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and the oh, wiki actually. is confusing because they've started breaking it into different pages. So that one's actually hidden on the circulation sub page of the reports. So there may be others on there that serve a better or do a better job of what you're needing and, and this may just be a good starting point too like i said instead of i can edit off of this okay 
find it. I think I might have actually found one of mine that you're welcome to pull apart and do whatever you want with, but let me make sure if I've got the right code. Of course, it's customized to our our location, but I'm going to try. And see how it looks so. Yeah, what what uh, iOS did you switch from? Uh, uh, I'm not, this is my first experience with an iOS. Um, uh, okay. I, I have, uh, but this one's working here good too, Jason. I'm gonna try yours, Daniel, too. But I like what Jason shared. This was good. Yeah, I'm and it, work off of that. it does give you two different approaches here. So the one from the that I linked is looking at issues and old issues. And this one that Daniel linked is looking at statistics. So um, you can you can kind of compare, see what's, uh, what you like better. <laughs> um, and it may, it may also like rely on how, how much data you keep. So like for us, we keep statistics. I think we keep statistics and issues all the way back. Um, but if you're truncating either of those tables, then one may work better than the other for you. Yeah, I was. I wanted to talk to talk to this group too about just like their uh, usage statistics, like uh, especially if you guys track. Because um, I believe you're both public libraries, right? Like a uh, whole. Yeah, I'm a district, and I think Jason's a, a consortium, aren't you? Yeah, we're a consortium of 40, let's see, we have 48 publics and one academic. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, see, that, that's, so I was trying, I, I started reaching out to try to get a little more uh, similar to me with the university, but um, we'll see how that goes over the next week or two. But uh, yeah, I was trying to see how you track your electronic usage as well, if that was like your electronic circulation. So we don't do that in Koha. We we actually have to go through the um, either the vendor site or um, we also have an, an OPAC that tracks it, but um, it's a new feature. So I'm not sure how well it it functions. Um, we have Discovery or Aspen as our OPAC. And so it's got that neat, neat new feature, but I'm still not sure how this, the stats are when compared to the vendor site. So, yeah, that's and for us. It's all external to Koha as well. We're using Hoopla. We're using Cloud Library, um, but we don't have a way to track actual usage within Koha. We did track like a semblance of usage before when you can turn on. Um, I think the system preferences track clicks and you can, it'll log how many times an A56 gets clicked, but that's not really um, usage. That's that's just saying that somebody clicked and went to that external site. So yeah, we don't have a good way to track um, our e-resource usage within Koha. Yeah, I, I didn't expect there to be just, that's, I was just wondering like uh, what other libraries were doing to do that. I figured it'd be an acceptable place to do that, even though, you know, it's about Koha, but still to get a little more background into libraries. Yeah, so it never, I'm sorry. It never hurts to ask. Yeah, and the, these, these reports are going to help here greatly. Oh, I, I, great, I greatly appreciate that. <laughs> hope, hope I can repay the favor either to you guys one day or somebody else down the line. Uh, you asked me what, what library management system I used before this. Did you guys use any before Koha? So I've I've been around. Uh, I used um, 
my first experience was with a unicorn and Circe, or yes, unicorn Circe Dynix. And then I went from that to Millennium to Aleph to um, back to Circe Dynix. And that, this time it was Symphony. And now I'm on Koha. So. Uh, with, for me, it's like we migrate off of all kinds of just systems. So we've migrated in from Fallout. We've migrated in from Circe. I think Dynix. Um, my personal experience, we used Winnebago Spectrum here uh, before moving to Koha. Um, and then there was like a text based Circe Dynix that, that they were on that a lot of things migrated into from. So touched a few different systems, but um, most recently we migrated one from Triple uh, I. But I, I'm not, I don't have a lot of familiarity with those other systems, mostly just co -op. Yeah, having gone from, you know, a whole bunch of different ILSs, I think Koha is one of the easier to use and um, their tech support isn't bad by water. Um, the, uh, you know, honestly, I was thinking about the, I think most of the circulation, all the statistics from all the other ILSs I used were based on item type. So um, it's just kind of the way that ILSs are construct constructed. So um, you're in for a long haul. Sorry, Evan. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Uh, that's and I I think Koha is pretty intuitive. It's just the like I said to save the headache of sitting there trying to write that out. I, I knew there had to be one that was just like a line item somebody made over the years. So it was just a matter of asking. <laughs> oh, the other thing I noticed with this report. And maybe it's just uh, because I'm in a consortium. It is it is going off the item home branch. So um, if you're a single location, it shouldn't matter. But if you've got multiple locations, you want to pay attention to what you're filtering on. Because generally for us, statistics are based on where the item checked out rather than where the item is owned or where the patron is from. Um, and then on Daniel's report, you're not filtering by a, a branch at all. So that's fine. It, again, if you're a single location, that, that's just something you have to um, kind of keep in mind. Yeah, this report was for uh, our, our adult literacy staff member, and she wanted to see how much of her, her collection was going out across the district. So that's why it's not based on home library or holding library, which is where, where the item is located. So. Yeah, and it, they've done a good job of adding to the statistics table um, more than we used, used to have. So you can filter it by item type, you can filter it by collection code, or you can filter it by uh, location. So you've got all three handles and angles you can kind of look at the data from. Another advantage of using statistics over issues is um, it's set in stone, although I think issues might be set in stone too. I don't want to give you bad information. I know statistics are set in stone. So like at the point of checkout, it's logging, location, collection code, item type. Um, sometimes when you run reports, it'll it'll look off the active item. Uh, so if something changes, then it throws off your statistics, um, your stats, depending on which tables you're querying. So just to draw this back into circulation, a lot of the, the reports you'll probably be able to find them if in the admin user groups. And that's where, you know, a lot of our, our report gurus lurk. So I definitely recommend going to that SIG group. But I was just wondering if anybody had any circulation um, questions. I, I do have one, but I want us to throw it out there, see if, if anybody had anything, so. I do have a yeah. Uh, Daniel, do you use auto renew or Evan at all? Yes, we use auto renew. We give them six auto renewals unless there's a hold and then they've got to bring it back. Do you, are you using the digested notice for that or the, are you using notices at all? 
we're using notices. I didn't know that they had it digested. I thought they were working on that and I never heard that it was fixed or it was okay. available. Yeah, we're testing it right now and the, the default notice is just kind of chunky clunky. So I was gonna ask if, if you had like a, a nice pretty digest notice, but it sounds like you're not, you don't. <laughs> no, but I'll look into it. I, you know, I thought there was a reason why it couldn't be, but if if there's a, if we can modify the notices, you should be able to like create one. So I'll, I'll yeah, I'll look around with it. I found one in a bug, and we're testing that out. Um, here's, I'll put the bug in the chat. So unrelated bug, but there's a um, a notice template in there. Uh, for us in our testing, we're finding it like behaving oddly, like it's sending out notices that are redundant. Like I had one uh, today where it, um, it sent out a, a notice that said, this item's not renewed. And then the next day it said, this item's not renewed. <laughs> and then like the day it was supposed to be renewed, it finally got the notice that said it was renewed. Um, so there's, there's something funky in our setup still. Um, as far as notices go, it's just, it's like unnecessarily noti notifying us that it's not renewing things when they're not eligible for renewal. I vaguely remember us having that issue at the first, but then I want to say Bywater cleared it up on the back end. Um, Jason, are you hosted by, or are you, you self-hosted? No, no, we're, we're a Bywater customer. So, and I've been working with them on it. They thought that the using the digest option would fix the problem. So that's why we're testing that out now, but I, um, I'm still running into it. So I'm wondering if it has to do with um, like the no renewal before setting. I have that set to zero right now, but it seems like it's not respecting it. Because my understanding is if you set it at zero, then it should only send, it should only try and renew the day that it's due and not before. But it sounds like it's trying, <laughs> it's trying and sending those like redundant notices more than a day before. So we're still, we're still testing and cranking on it. Yeah, all I can say is that it works great when, when you get it up and running, so. That's good news. So anybody else have any other questions? I don't want to, to hog, but I found an interesting kind of issue, so. So the, the thing that I was, I, I stumbled across and it, it happens with our self checks and I actually referenced it in the, in the agenda. And it's weird, it's, it happens, we have two types of self checks. We have uh, the Bibliotheca and we have one from FE Tech. And for some reason, when you look at a user's account Items that are on hold on the user's account that have an on order status don't display. And the one self check says, like, if the person has 12, it'll say people, the person has 12 on hold items, but it'll only show seven because those seven items are not on order. And then the other one would say, you only have seven items. It's really weird. And I was wondering if anybody else had run across this. I don't have much experience with SIP2 checkout or self checkouts. So I can't help there. Nuts, oh, okay. Yeah, we have one library that has Biblioteca machines, I think. Um, they haven't told me anything like this before. All right. Evan, are you, do you have any AMHs or, or self-checks in your, your, your library? 
What's uh, what's an AMH? It's an automated material handling. So it'll it'll check people will drop it into a box and it'll check things in automatically. It doesn't have to staff don't have to touch it. Uh, no, we do not have that. Uh, self checks. Okay. Yeah, a lot of them run on SIP and they're a lot of fun when they go down. You just it's a lot of troubleshooting shooting and oftentimes they'll they'll just randomly start working again for some weird reason so but so is it is it the on order status that's messing it up like if they're if they don't have that status then it works okay i believe so yeah because all the items here's the weird thing the it's the only the, the on order status if it's missing or lost it'll still show it's just really bizarre are you using a, so for ours we're using a not for loan status for on order i think yeah because it'll, it'll has hold i wonder if that's the difference i wonder if it's because it's not for loan status it's handling it different than like um, missing or lost status yeah i'll try that out and just play with it a bit but it, it's just a really kind of random thing so yeah it sounds like something maybe in the back end configuration yeah. i don't know there i found a bug that's talking about incorrect handling of hold levels in the two code um that doesn't sound like your problem though no hmm. can you post the link and I'll, I'll take a look at it when i get a chance sure thanks So Evan, if you you haven't run into this site, the Bugzilla, the Koha Bugzilla site is is great reference for Koha issues. Although searching in it can be difficult because people they name things, they have very interesting naming conventions. So. Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't look the most user friendly, uh, like I said, just or even that too. Uh, in, incorrect naming conventions and uh, all problems are communication problems. You know, people don't you don't know how to communicate what you're trying to get fixed, and, and you don't know how to communicate what to fix, and <laughs> vice versa. But yeah, I've been on there trying to look around to see if I could help in any way. Uh, to no, no progress yet. <laughs> yeah, it, it it's gonna take a while. I, I'm still not very good at it myself. So, but. I think I'm gonna play around with the the not for loan status. See if I can get that, and then I might actually take this bug to the admin group and see if anybody else has seen it. But I, I was like, hey, it's circulation related. I can bring it up in this meeting. So Anybody else have any uh, circulation things they wanted to check out or uh, any notice anything interesting with when you upgraded to 2111 that you weren't expecting? I haven't upgraded yet. Ours is next Monday. So <laughs> I keep saying I don't have anything to help with, but I don't have anything to share there either. Well, one weird thing that I noticed is that the circulation uh, the, when you check in a claims return or return a claims returned, there's an, an option to solve it in the check-in screen. However, after you solve it, the message still remains. And I want to vaguely say that, that that's been mentioned somewhere, but I'm not entirely sure. It was just, that was the one weird thing that I, I saw so far. So other than that, 2111 is pretty, pretty snazzy, so.
Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping for not a lot of changes. I haven't, <laughs> I mean, I've looked at it, I've looked at our, our test for, but I have to get it like compiled and uh, get some notes out to my people by Friday. So uh, I did, there is a Monday minute on that claims return thing for more reading. I don't know. <laughs> It's, it's a cool feature. I really like it. It's just that it, it that's kind of a, it, it, it messes with my head. I'm like, is that still done? Did it actually claims, re did it complete the complaints, claims return or not? So it's just a, a little bit of wonkiness right there. So, but new, cool new feature. All right. Does anybody else have any circulation stuff? I think next time I'll send out the, the reminder and probably get more people. So, or actually next time is the, is Koha US, isn't it? Yeah. So it's kind of up to you whether we have the, um, we could have the regular meeting and then also have a meeting at, Koha, at the Qualcomm or cancel next month's meeting and just have the Qualcomm meeting. Um, I think each sig can kind of decide that, I would say. Yeah, I think I said I was going to just cancel the meeting and have it at CoahuaCon. I'm not going to be there in person. I'll be uh, virtual, though. So it just, my scheduling, it's kind of, that's how it, I've got a lot of irons in the fire right now. And I don't think I can leave the district for a training just, or go into a, a convention just yet, so. Okay, and that works. We've got other SIGs doing that as well. So, um, yeah, we, we haven't quite figured out the logistics, but I think it'll probably be like, uh, we'll have the Zoom room where anybody can come join and then also stream out the Zoom room to YouTube for those days so that people can also participate on the YouTube chat. I think we did it last year in that way and it worked out pretty well. Yeah, so that's the plan at this point at least. Okay. All right. Well, I, I, I'm i going to assume that nobody else has any circulation questions or issues that they've run across. and Nothing at this point. <laughs> uh, but again, I want to just say thank you and look forward to that uh, co-log con. Is there anything I should expect for on there? Is there anything to like a special day I should tune in or anything like that? Are you registered, away. right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I signed up on the email list. Uh, I assumed it was just like uh, pretty much a conversation like these meetings, in a sense, where people discuss so, issues and things. Uh, yeah, know. so the conference is um, like full-fledged full international conference, and we'll have two days of presentations. I put the direct link to the um, schedule there in the chat, so you can see the presentations that are planned. Um, and then the second two days are sort of, traditionally they've been called hack fest, but we've been trying to get away from that terminology because people get scared by it. Um, so hack fest workshoppy days. Um, in the mornings, we'll have some more like formal structured trainings and then we'll have our SIG meetings in the afternoon. So the CERC SIG is on, at two o'clock on Thursday. Um, but yeah, so the first two days, Primarily, you'll be watching, unless you're coming in person, you'll be watching those on YouTube uh, and just tuning in. And then on the second two days, we'll kind of open up the Zoom room and you can join into the conversations there. Um, that's the plan, at least. And if you haven't registered that, uh, you'll want to do that so that we can- Yeah, I think I'm all link. good there, but it, but it okay. sounds good. I, I'm looking forward to it, to see what unfolds. And Sure. Hopefully uh, grow, grow in the community here a little bit too. <laughs> yeah. Well, if anybody doesn't have any other CERC issues or agendas or uh, topics they want to talk about, I can end this meeting. So I figured I'd. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys. Uh, have a good one. Thanks. All right. Take care. See you guys next month or see you at Koha Con. See ya. Bye. Thanks again.